it was absolutely amazing the first time I got to hold them. I mean, they're so tiny and they're curled up. Um, the nurses put them in different positions. So I just, the, the feeling, I can't even explain how wonderful it was to get to hold them for the first time. And that, like I said, that skin to skin, just I, it, it just made it all come together. We actually um, live in Fishersville, so we traveled back and forth, um, and you would get in the habit of seeing families passing through and you know, have good conversations about what's going on, and you were praying for your children, but you were also praying for the other families. Yeah, you really um, got to know people and their story and kind of kept up with what their kids were doing and how they were developing also. So. And we would, you know, find out test results and you know, parents, we would talk back and forth about what results came back and kind of talk together about different things like that. And the nurses just did such fun things. Um, they made little signs for our, the isolates that the kids were in. Um, so it had like their name and uh, the, how much they weighed and how long they were. So they would surprise us with fun little things um, when we would come in the next day and just do fun things. The one thing I remember um, is giving uh, baths for the first time. Mm -hmm. The nurses let us jump in and do the first bath. Um, and it was just, you know, this little tub and they're in there and we uh, brush their hair. They had toothbrushes <laughs> that we brushed their hair with. <laughs> so that was just a fun memory. Mm -hmm. You actually um, got to know the nurses very well. <laughs> Um, there was kind of like a rotation that, so it wasn't like new people all the time. You really got to know the nurses that were caring for your children. Um, and you know, we would read a book to them before we left and we had a little nursery thing that hung on the side and we would push the play button. But I just felt so comfortable that the nurses were continuing those yeah, loving really things. That, you had that continuity between you had the same nurses every day, and so they knew the story and any problems. They knew our and, family. They knew, you know, kind of yeah, so they were, a lot of stuff. Even our dog. They knew the dog's name. They had a picture of our dog up in the in the room. Um, any family. I mean, they were just very, very welcome to us. Um, and we kept in touch with two of the nurses, and they came to the boys' first birthday party. So that was cool. I really think that was probably one of the hardest parts for me and was having to go home. You, you always expect to you know, leave the hospital after a day or two with your, you know, your perfect child. And then for us to have to leave both of our children there, knowing that we didn't know when they were going to be able to come home. So I remember we got home and laid in bed and cried. Mm -hmm. We just laid down and cried because it's, you just imagined carrying the little carriers in and, bringing your children home, so. And my sister got me um, a CD with lullabies, and I remember driving across the mountain, and I'd listen to the same CD over and over. It was just kind of a comforting piece that kind of kept things mm -hmm. a little bit more peaceful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, um, I think it was as easy as it, could be. I mean, it's always hard to leave your child with someone, um, but knowing the nurses and getting to know them through their rotations, like I said, there were, you know, a limited number and they would move us from, was it called different pods? Within the NICU, right? Within the NICU. Um, so we really got to know the nurses well, and so that made it easier to leave them at night knowing I could get back the next day. I knew they were in good hands. Yeah, we knew that they were where they needed to be, that they had the whole team looking after them. It wasn't one doctor, it was a team of doctors, and it wasn't just a nurse, it was a respiratory therapist and a nurse and multiple nurses. So, yeah, we were we were worried about our children, but we were, we were fine we with the care that they were We felt comfortable with the care they were giving. And I remember going in, the boys were born May 4th, and so it was very close to Mother's Day. And I remember going in and they had made me little Mother's Day cards, the nurses did. So just nice little treats like that. We felt very fortunate uh, to have 
the University of Virginia here. Um, I had not had any experiences with the Children's Hospital, but um, I had heard great things. And so I definitely was scared, but there was a sense right there that UVA's here and they can help us. Um, so I've, I've, I was, like I said, we were very scared, but just the knowing that UVA Children's Hospital was there, it added a comfort level. Right. Now briefly, Ooh, those there. boys are full steam ahead. They are all boy. They are a handful, <laughs> <laughs> full time. I just can't believe how much they've grown um, from three pounds, four ounces. They're like 50 pounds now. <laughs> so like I said, seven years old, full steam ahead. <laughs> We were in the NICU for 31 days and pretty cool. We were nearing the end um, of those days. So they approached us to be a family to be interviewed for their telethon. And we were nervous at first, but it was exciting that they offered us the invitations. We were like, yeah, definitely. And then they threw in that Rondé Barber would be there. Um, and he would actually get to hold our kids. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. We're both sports fans and like the University of Virginia athletics. So it was very cool. So they introduced us and I remember he had a football. He held up the football and then he actually- And the football was the same size or same, bigger than the boys yeah. were. So. And then he actually yeah. held, uh, held each boy on each side. And uh, so that was very cool. And we actually, he writes children's books, so he autographed um, books for the kids. So Ashton and Ethan both have a book autographed by him, so that was very cool. I know, um, gosh, whenever I go to the grocery store, Food Line, we live near Food Line, and they're always like, do you want to support the Children's Miracle Network? And I'm like, absolutely, I add it on to my grocery bill. Um, so just the help that they gave us, we definitely want to give back um, so that other families can experience that. Anybody that faces um, a situation like we did, I mean, there's nothing I can say to make it easier, but I can say that there's a great team waiting there to help you, and the UVA Children's Hospital definitely changed our lives um, and really opened our eyes to what goes on and just how amazing nurses, doctors, therapists, how they really truly care about you and your family. And it just, it makes it a little bit easier to know easier, right. that they're there to help. As you can see, we're all, we're all living, living healthier, healthier ever, ever after. after.